Hello everyone, today's video is about methylene blue. As per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. And if you don't mind taking a quick moment at some point to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. So, um, I got a comment on uh, one of my earlier or re recent Instagram videos. Uh, well, I post my videos on a few different platforms, uh, but uh, I've had a comment on um, one of the Instagram posts and um, it was about one of my Methylene Blue videos. And it was just um, a very pleasant surprise that it was actually a comment from um, a jujitsu person that I follow on Instagram. Uh, her name's uh, Lux, um, her handle's Lux Potentia. I don't know if that's her last name or not, but um, anyway, she posted a comment um, or slash question actually um, about methylene blue and I was just like oh my gosh like I follow you on Instagram and she has really great videos different jujitsu techniques I've been training jujitsu for um, almost a few years now um, still not very good but you know I, I love it I'm totally addicted to it it's amazing so anyways I was uh, very surprised and um, she asked questions and so this is a video answering those questions um, maybe plus a little bit of bonus info about methylene blue um, <clears throat> I've tagged her in the whatever video description for this or whatnot. So if you're interested in jujitsu, um, check out her posts because they're, they're always really great and useful. Um, so the question was something to the effect of my, my computer died, so I don't have it up here in front of me, but, um, something to the effect of, um, is there any reason um, not to take methylene blue? And then how often do I recommend that my patients take methylene blue? Um, so, um, in terms of why wouldn't one take methylene blue, I mean, outside of being on a medication or, um, eating foods that are contraindicated to take with methylene blue. I have other videos where I talk about how it's, um, we have to exercise caution when uh, taking medications that boost up serotonin um, or inhibit the breakdown of serotonin um, or eating foods that are high in uh, tyramine, uh, which would be like aged foods, cured foods, fermented foods, because um, that can, um, uh, methylene blue has some degree of monoamine oxidase inhibition effect, and so that, that can sometimes lead to a uh, difficult uh, that can lead to a difficulty with breaking down tyramine, and that can lead to a uh, increase in norepinephrine in the body, and that can lead to a hypertensive crisis. So, no bueno. Uh, things that boost up serotonin in the body, like drugs or potentially supplements, um, that can lead to serotonin syndrome. So those are the main things we have to be careful with. But those would really be the main reasons that I would say for a patient of mine, like we really probably shouldn't work with methylene blue or we want to be really, really cautious with methylene blue. Um, other reasons might be in patients who are quite compromised with their health. If they have a lot of issues with their detoxification pathways, or they just seem to be really low energy, they might not be able to handle some of the uh, potential detoxification effects from methylene blue. Um, they might not be able to handle some of the um, specific mitochondrial detoxification effects that might happen for methylene blue, um, or if they're taking higher doses of methylene blue and it is now working as a pro-oxidant, not an antioxidant, then uh, that could lead to a microbial, uh, like a, a Hertz reaction, like a microbial excessive die-off reaction. So that could make them feel really crummy if they didn't have the energy reserves or other physiological um, capacities to handle that type of effect. So those would really be the, the main reasons um, for like kind of my like an average patient. I don't treat that many average patients. I do have some uh, patients who just come in for biohacking. So that's, that's always fun. And so they're like, oftentimes we'll use methylene blue in that category. And then I have patients where they were chronically ill and then now they're not chronically ill. And so they're just kind of like normies as I affectionately call them. Um, and very, very, I don't know, hard, I'd be hard pressed to think of any other contraindications for methylene blue or reasons to be really cautious with methylene blue beyond those. Um, so generally, you know, pretty safe thing to try um, for, you know, for the patients in my population, I'm not giving any advice here over social media. Um, in terms of dosing for uh, my patients, like how often do I recommend they take it? Um, again, kind of depends on why it's being prescribed. So for patients that do have underlying health issues, like say fatigue issues, brain fog issues, things like that, especially patients who are um, say dealing with um, like cognitive decline, like patients with you know say Alzheimer's or vascular dementia, maybe patients with um, neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's or MS. Um, with them, you know, I'm usually recommending that they take um, the methylene blue a couple of times a day, uh, making sure that we're sticking with those kind of like antioxidant doses, not getting like too 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 high with the dosing. Um, and yeah, so usually taking it twice a day. Um, for patients who are using methylene blue in my practice for more of like a biohacking reason or just a general health promotion reason. Um, 
I'm a big fan of just recommending that they use it to whatever extent it seems to help them. So in some cases, like um, as I've said in other videos before, you know, I've taken methylene blue myself and I don't feel any different when I take it. I'd like to, I'd, I'd like it to make me feel superhuman, um, but quite frankly, I already feel really good every day in terms of my energy, my uh, mental capacity, my memory, et cetera, et cetera. I take really good care of myself, have been for years, so I don't get a boost from methylene blue. Um, with that being said, um, if I were to, I don't know, be exposed to a bunch of toxins for some reason, um, I don't know if I took my kids on a field trip somewhere and they, I don't know, um, I was exposed to a lot of exhaust fumes or I don't know, I took them to like a plastic making factory or something crazy like that and I was exposed to a bunch of chemicals. I, I don't can't think of a good scenario here. Maybe I need some methylene blue, I can think of better examples. Um, then that might be a reason that I would personally take some methylene blue to say, mm, I think I need a big kick of antioxidants. Or, or I suppose another reason would be if I say went for an x-ray or a CT scan, or I was gonna be exposed to a lot of ionizing radiation for some reason, then I might take some methylene blue uh, for a few days around that period of time to help um, just combat the effects of the, um, to neutralize some of those free radicals that were formed due to that exposure. Um, so there, there could be more of like a as needed basis for methylene blue, but outside of that, it's really more about just what makes a patient feel the best. Um, so if they're taking it once a day, twice a day, three times a day, and then playing with different dosages, um, you know, when you look at the research literature, the dosing can really vary a fair bit. You know, they're usually dosing it in, you know, milligrams per kilogram of ideal body weight. You know, it depends on the research literature you read, you know, oftentimes between say like, you know, one to four milligrams. Um, but that's, you know, again, sometimes getting into like really, really high uh, dosing, like four milligrams per kilogram. That's like, that's pretty darn high dosing uh, for methylene blue. Um, so um, it, it would really depend on what was making them feel the best. So if a patient said, hey, I take, you know, um, X number of milligrams, like say hypothetically, like, you know, I take 30 milligrams uh, once a day, like, you know, first thing in the morning, and that seems to give me a nice energy kick, you know, my brain's really on, it's feeling really good at work. Um, and, you know, I've tried taking 30 milligrams again at supper time, and it didn't really give me any extra benefit. It's like, great, once a day for you sounds good. And then it's like, well, do you need to take it um, just on the weekdays when you have, you know, say work and kids and jujitsu and whatever else you're dealing with, um, or in the, on the weekend, you don't really need it. I know myself, um, I'll typically, uh, I don't know, well, lately I've been busier because my family member, as I mentioned, still in the hospital, he's doing so much better, almost ready to come home. It's so close. It's, it's wonderful. Um, you know, I've been taking, um, supplements like week long because every day I'm in the hospital with my family member. Um, but uh, generally speaking, you know, like I'll not take mitochondrial support uh, formula on the weekends because I just don't really feel like I need it. Um, yes, I'm busy with my kids on the weekends, but um, I don't really, you know, I'm not seeing patients as well. I'm not, you know, on in that same way. Um, so on those days, so you know, kind of pulsing it sort of as needed, depending on those day-to-day um, -day responsibilities and requirements and things like that. So it's just, it's really um, a, a sort of um, yeah, individually tailored thing as far as the dosing goes. With that being said, you know, we all have to kind of start somewhere. So with my patients, you know, I'll usually recommend that they start kind of at the lower end of the dosing range, um, you know, taking it a couple of times a day and then see how they feel. And then as long as they're not having any side effects, as long as they're not getting annoyed by having blue urine all day and, you know, like risking staining their toilet bowls and all the fun things that come with it. Yeah, there, there's a contraindication in methylene blue, like fear of staining um, toilet apparatus. That's, that, that would be, that would be a, contraindication, I suppose. Um, then, uh, yeah, we'll usually start with a lower dose. If that's not really doing the trick, we'll kind of build it up a little bit more and, you know, kind of just gradually increase it. Um, and uh, then they just kind of play it by ear and see how they feel. So not a one size fits all. Anyways, um, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful jujitsu videos, Lux. I really appreciate them. And um, yeah, I hope this information was useful. If anybody has any additional questions about methylene blue, and I know you do, because man, oh man, Nothing blue questions. They're they're like the most common questions I get on my videos. Um, so if you have questions about nothing blue, please post them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.